Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal and welcome to your latest transfer news. With only two days remaining, we are reaching the point where Arsenal fans will start having a meltdown. But let's talk about the latest on Tillemans, on Modric and, and um, Danilo from Palmeiras. A new, uh, we actually were linked to him back in January, but as of now, this transfer window is a new target for us. So um, let's see what um, the articles had to say. So first of all, on Mikel Atita, Charles Watt says, still time for Arsenal to do something. Atita has made it clear he wants to and they are active but two big outlets in successive summer windows without significant sales means money is tight a central midfielder would be welcome although everyone seems to be forgetting fabio Vieira, the 30 million signing so the point he's making is that over the last two transfer windows yes we've gotten rid of a lot of players but you've not really got any money for them a lot of players have left basically on a free some of our had their cut contracts cancelled some have moved out alone we've not really made any significant sales of 60 million 50 million so we've not really picked up any um cash for any of the players that we've sold but in terms of um signings we sold we bought like six players last transfer window and this time we bought another like four or five players without selling any players at all so that is a good point and also he says that Fabio Vieira um is part of the Arsenal team a lot of people have kind of forgotten about him I've even seen people saying we don't care about Fabio Vera. Come on, because we've not seen him play, that does not mean he's not an Arsenal player. He will probably play tonight against Aston Villa, and from here is going to be a, a focus as well in our team. We need him to be at the top of his game as well. So, yes, we do have a central midfielder. Yes, we've not really um, sold anyone for any cash over the last couple of years, but we still need a defensive midfielder. With Thomas Partey out and the news about El Nini being out, I still think we definitely need a defensive midfielder. Even before the injuries, I still thought we needed a midfielder because the drop in quality when part is not there the drop in quality to the backup is huge you need someone else to play there you, ideally you need someone who can play as a defensive midfielder and a central midfielder so the party role and the Jaka role if you can get a player who can do both without any trouble that would be great so according to Charles Watts though he does say that Arsenal are looking at bringing in a central midfielder and that uh, is um is they're active Arsenal and that are active in the transfer market so that's good to hear um in terms of uh, Yuri Tillemans. Is Yuri Tillemans one of the guys that we are going to sign before the deadline hits tomorrow night? According to Ben Jacobs, earlier in the window, Arsenal used intermediaries to discuss a fee for Tillemans and wanted to pay $23 million. It didn't lead to a bid. Leicester still anticipating three Premier League clubs to make late moves for Tillemans, but they won't sell at a drastically reduced price. So... Ben Jacob says that Arsenal um, wanted to pay 23 million earlier on in the window, but he never actually made that bid. So I'm guessing the only reason why he didn't make it is one, either we were going for other targets like we were told, the likes of Jesus and other players, or number two, Leicester were just like, you know what, if it's 23 million, forget about it. We are not going to sell for you till months for 23 million. And Arsenal are like, you know what, we'll come back later. So uh, later is it should be now because we've waited for like three months for this deal to happen uh but according to bain jacobs uh we actually approached them earlier and the, the actually the the personal terms with Arsenal and Leicester were agreed a long time ago, according to Fabrizio Romano, but Leicester did not need to sell him. I, I guess Leicester are happy to lose him on a free next summer transfer window, I, I guess, but they won't allow um, Tillemans to leave for um, a, a drastically reduced price. He also goes on to say um, that Leicester still hoping for 30 million for Yuri Tillemans and able to hold out after selling Wesley for Fana and being on the receiving end of a generous payment structure. They received a lot of money for Fofana from Chelsea. See, that price is still lower than they paid for Tillemans, which is what Leicester have ideally wanted all window. So Leicester want 30 million for Tillemans. Uh, I think he's saying that um, Tillemans moved to Leicester for more money than that. So Leicester is still making a loss and they are trying not to make even a, more, a, a bigger loss um, on Tillemans. So whichever team wants to pay 30 million, that's when they're going to sell or sell him. They're not going to sell him for 25 or 20 million at all. So it's up to any of the teams that want him to pay that um, 30 million. So as well, uh, Ben Jacobs did mention that it's not only Arsenal. They're anticipating three other clubs to make bids. Those clubs could be um, Liverpool and Newcastle mostly. Those are the teams that uh, might want Tillemans as well because uh, they're trying to sort out their midfielders too. So... On Tillemans, this is going to be a really interesting one because I know if we sign him, the far, like literally every single fan will be happy because we've waited so long for him and all that. Um, 
if he ends up joining like a Liverpool or Newcastle, it would be pretty sad, especially if we don't get our midfielder, uh, our midfielder ourselves, because that is a role that we really need players to play in, especially Premier League experienced players like Tillemans, a player who has already played there, a player who's um so we've already seen his quality for Leicester. We've already seen his quality of a, not not one year, two years. He's already won the FA Cup for Leicester, scoring the goal in the final. We know, we know his quality, and he seemed to be happy to join Arsenal. Like everything that we've had throughout the transfer window, is happy to join Arsenal. So let's hope that uh, materializes between now and tomorrow. I'd be very happy. Like tonight, if we hear that Tillemans has, uh, let's say, Tillemans is on the way to London for a medical or something, I mean, he would be a perfect. But um, Tillemans is not the only one Arsenal are looking at at the moment. There's this other guy called Danilo from Palmeiras. 21-year-old, he's about to turn 22 um, earlier. Next year, he's going to be turning 22. Um, he plays as a midfielder for um, Palmeiras. It's not the first time we wanted him, as I mentioned at the beginning. We wanted him uh, back in January, I think, last summer transfer window. Uh, but uh, it went quiet. And right now, we are back for him once again. So... According to reports, Arsenal have made a 20 million bid for Palmeiras Danilo. So it's looking like we've made a bid for him, 20 million, according to various sources um, saying that we've uh, made the bid for him. The problem is, is 20 million enough for Palmeiras? Because other journalists have reported that um, Arsenal have presented a proposal of 20 million to Palmeiras to sign midfielder Danilo. The offers delivered on Tuesday. So that was yesterday as goal land. However, the trend is for the proposal proposal to be rejected. So according to various journalists who reported that, um, they are saying that 20 million will probably be rejected because it's worth more than 20 million um, to them. He can play in a couple of different positions in midfield. He has already won a couple of trophies with the Palmeiras as well. He's a winner. He, he, he adds quality, like his passing range itself, like we definitely add quality to your team but and that is why 20 million will be too um little so unless Arsenal really um we, we are good with them um, attracting brazilians so with edu bring from there and uh, already bringing the likes of martinelli marquinhos I, I would i would still be confident with this one if you really wanted him if you really want him i'd still be confident with this one because he is brazilian is from those areas uh where edu loves to do deals from uh, the brazilian league and um yes he is a very important player in their team but according um like Obviously, they would want to come to um, the Premier League. And if the payment structure is great, they probably would accept it. Maybe, say, 20 million plus something else or, uh, I don't know, a loan deal first and then you can sign him later. This one could probably even be a loan deal. I'm still expecting us all to pull off one loan deal between now and tomorrow. But who? I have no idea who it could be. But that is the latest on uh, Palmeiras Danilo. Speaking of loan deals, could, could this guy be another guy we could get on loan? Modric. But uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, yesterday a lot of journalists reported that Astol were making the bid for him. Astol were already talking about 25 million for him. Shakhtar wanted 25 million. Shakhtar do want 25 million, but a couple of journalists reported that we are going to pay that, that, that 25 million. But according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal have not opened talks with Shakhtar for Modric as revealed here on Monday. Arsenal follow Modric and had contacts on player side, but there's no bid um, or any advanced negotiations at the moment. So it's not um, close at all. Uh, yes, we do want the player. Yes, we've already contacted the player, but we've not um, talked to the club yet. Shakhtar have made it um, open that they want 25 million for him, nothing less than that. This could be another that we might end up getting on loan. I'm not sure if Shakhtar want to um, let him go on loan if they just want the money right away, but this could be another one. I wouldn't be surprised if Arsenal um, asked for a loan deal for six months or one year, then we we'll see how it does in the Premier League. Uh, but he is a winger. Uh, for me, I still think we need midfielders. But the winger, winger situation, I think Martinelli is good. Saka is good. Um, Marquinhos can be given a chance for a very appeared on that right side in the other 21s game. Smith Rowe can play there as well. Yes, I do understand Like if someone like Saka goes down injured on that right side, you're going to have to move everything around if you don't have a player on that side. So... I wouldn't mind signing a winger, but I'd, I'd mind if we spent 50 million on a winger and not sign a midfielder. For me, I want us to spend that kind of money on a midfielder. And then if you want to get a winger, even if it's on loan, fine. Uh, because I think we definitely need midfielders um, right away. That is what I'd want right now. So those are the three players we are looking at right now. There's obviously others, but it's a bit quiet. Players like Pedro Neto, is, we have to remain patient with this one. We have to wait and see. They actually have a game today. Let's see if uh, Pedro Neto will play against... Uh, 
uh, Bournemouth today. And uh, yeah, I think those are the ones that uh, we know about. We still expect other players to be leaving. Uh, we are waiting for Maitland Niles. He actually just got a baby, I think, yesterday. So um, he's um, happy right now. Let's see if he's going to be um, at Arsenal moving today or tomorrow. If he, is he going to stay? What's the latest on Bellerin? You have to wait and see as well. And obviously, players like um, Cody Gagpo, could he make surprise bids for players like Cody Gagpo? He's wanted by teams, I think, like, Everton or something, no, not the not the top six teams, not any of the top six teams. Is wanted by the mid table teams in the Premier League. That's an interesting one because the likes of my United and Arsenal wanted him. But you have to wait and see what happens. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch up with you on the next one.